What's going on everyone, Jeremy here from The Quartering, and the reviews are in, and it's the most perfect, bestest show ever in history of all shows that have ever existed, and you must consume it and then get excited about consuming the next season of it ever, 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 and forever. <sighs> the reviews are in on She-Hulk, and it's the most perfect show in history. That's right, I looked earlier today, it was at a 95%. Now look, let me say this, I want to be very clear. I'm only memeing on She-Hulk. I don't care that it exists. I don't care that it might uh, appeal to you. You should watch the shows that like you're into and and never feel like bad or you know guilty about enjoying the things you do. I've said on many occasions, I enjoy the movie Paul Bart Mall Cop and um, The Last Christmas with Queen Latifah. Okay, I, I, I don't. I am in no position to judge the program you're watching. I'm currently watching a show called Mama's Boys, which is about girls that date guys who have weird relationships with their moms. So, again, it's just for fun. You should enjoy what you want to enjoy, and I never want to alienate people. I don't want people to feel that, you know, a particular way. 95%! We must find the single bad review, and then and figure out who this person is, and then cancel them. Now, She-Hulk is supposedly a comedy, but, you know, I would argue that it's it may be a comedy, uh, but it also enjoys putting down previous Marvel characters, and it's just not for me, and that's okay. And, and it's like, I've kind of grown out of this, like, consuming stuff that I know isn't made for me, and then complaining that it sucks. Um, She-Hulk is looks like it's dumb. It looks like it's lowbrow humor, but I'm also almost 40. And maybe there are some redeeming factors to the show, but what I think is hilarious is the absurdly high rating. So we actually see now with 141 reviews coming in is now at an 88%. Some of the most ardent feminist reviewers uh, have complained that it's a little too feminist, which is... I mean, Grace Randolph said that it is a little too feminist. I am not actually making that up. Uh, but the media is in a full-blown protection mode. And this is where it gets cringe. This article, you know, uh, over on MSN, which was uh, repressed from the Mary Sue. Stop being gross about She-Hulk before the show even airs. Well, disliking a show before it even airs is obviously uh, an interesting position to have. But also you have a position of... Uh, knob gobbling the show before it ever even airs too we know that critics were allowed to watch four episodes and most of them say that the episodes are far too short and we know this with marvel shows they have all the credit scenes and all this wasted time in every show um but this type of show should only be about 30 minutes long of actual show that is i don't know why I continue to see TikToks or tweets saying that She-Hulk Attorney of Law is a clear sign of the decline of the MCU. The show hasn't even been released yet, but it's time to talk about it. Imagine you're logging on Twitter and you know someone writing something negative about a show and how it's taking the MCU down as a whole and it's making it about She-Hulk. Now this, again, is particularly frustrating for one reason and one reason alone. The show is not out yet. And again, this is saying, stop being gross about She-Hulk before they ever even air it. And they say... Well, it must be sexism. All this reads to me is just sexism. That no one likes She-Hulk she seems to be written and directed by women. And it's unapologetically about it from the trailers. It's not women co-directing with a man. It's unapol unapologetically feminine, fun. And we've really had that. We've not really had that in the MCU yet. We've had plenty of male-dominated projects that were started to have women more involved in the creation of things. But this is the first time that the MCU is properly written and directed solely by women. Um, what about Captain Marvel? Ava DuVernary or whatever, directing the latest one? Anyway, Kat Corio and Anu Valia both split directing duties, while the head writer for the show is Jessica Gao. I'm excited to see, and there's something that actually has me waiting for She-Hulk come out in a way that I didn't expect. So to consistently see people online tearing it down for their own warped understanding of the comics, it's bad. Well, the original comic was a little more self-aware. It was a little more campy, fourth wall breaking, and maybe the show will be that way. You see discussing film rights. 
She-Hulk debuts on Rotten Tomatoes with 87% from 93 reviews. It's currently at 88% from 141 reviews. But is it that good? Seems extremely unlikely. She a lot of comments flop. We found one of the 30-year-olds. Drop it to an 80. Got invited to the premiere and holy, it was holy mid. Um, premiere? I don't know about all that. It's most people watch uh, screeners nowadays. I, I still get how Miss and Mid was 95, 98 actually. Uh, you know, I, I don't really understand, you know, it's, it's hilarious to me in general that these shows are so overhyped. I mean, they had it almost as better call, almost as good as Better Call Saul, which had a 98% critic score and a 96% audience score. Um, and you see all these Stan accounts, you see a lot of She Hulk avatars. I'm now of the mindset that these are, here's another She Hulk avatar saying that it's amazing and it's never been better. I think that these are paid accounts from Marvel. I think they're fake. I think they're bot accounts that are run by marketing firms. Uh, marketing interns that go online all day and talk endlessly positive about a thing that they're paid to talk endlessly positive about. I refuse to believe that there are actually people that like change their avatar to She-Hulk and talk about She-Hulk all day long. The same way I refuse to believe it with Captain Marvel or with, uh, you know, a lot of these, you know, Raylos and things of that nature. I used to think that they're just real people who are psychotic. Now I think I've changed my opinion to it's actually marketing agencies doing this, um, you know, and running behind bot accounts. And, and they may, there may be a real person behind their account, but what they're saying is not authentic. You see, founding in a comic story, she who director, she Hulk director hopes Disney plus series makes it normal to have female superheroes. Forget series' own advertising treats Jennifer Walters' gender as a novelty. Of course, the must-she series, the MCU, all of these things. Uh, when you tokenize the character in this manner, it's hard to escape that. Now, I think She-Hulk is a pretty interesting character. It's hard for me to see room in like the Avengers for more side characters, but She-Hulk, it's just like, now there's two Hulks? Are we gonna also then have like Riri Williams and then we're gonna have like Captain America and, 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 and mini Captain America? Like, it's just, I don't know. She-Hulk attorney at law, of course. Uh, the writers admitted, by the way, that they don't have any good writers. I mean, essentially, you see this, <coughs> here's a meme. Why does the CGI for this Rage Shadow Legends ad look better than that of She-Hulk? It's a good question. It's actually a very good question. It's a question that a lot of people asked. Um, and, I, you know, I was looking at Grace Randolph last night, her take on it, her review on it. She's more lefty-leaning, and plus she's a woman, a strong, independent whammon who don't need no man. So the show is clearly targeted to her. And you see like <laughs> crying, laughing and hiring a writer with trial scenes experience was obviously out of the question who admits stuff like this. That's in response to Variety saying Jessica Gao's original pitch for Marvel She-Hulk included a trial for the abomination that spanned multiple episodes. Quote, one thing that we realized very, or that we all realized very slowly was none of us were adept at writing, comma, you know, rousing trial scenes. Now, the, the the response, of course, from Grace is like, you couldn't hire someone who could do that? There's nobody out there from Ally McBeal or um, The Firm or, you know, all these courtroom um, courtroom dramas that were so popular in the 90s. It, it's so weird. Is it, there's enough material in the MCU for a crime drama. Look at all the stuff at the Daredevil Netflix and that Kingpin was up to. Yeah, I think so too. It could have worked. But to, to admit it out loud certainly seems a little odd. Of course, then you get Paper Magazine printing Jamela Jamil in, injured her a-hole while filming filming She-Hulk. This is the this is the promotion that you're getting. I, I get it. I think like this show is just not for it's for oh it's whoa, it keeps 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is it dropping so much? Why does it say 83 now? Uh-oh. It went from 88. Now it's at 87 critic ratings. It's removing critics. There's something funny going on. You just saw that, right? It went from 141 critic reviews down to 127 and it rate 125 and now it raised the score back up to 87. What's going on with this? What the and what the Now this one says 83. Rotten Tomatoes is doing some funny business with the reviews. That's what they're doing. You just saw that in real time, right? And like, if I want to see the actual reviews, you get a lot of, and look, this show may be a fine romp, you know, like comedy and stuff like that. Not everything in the MCU has to be like, the world is ending and, you know, especially when you have Disney producing all this content. And I do think that there are cool shows that you can make and maybe this is one of them. You can see She-Hulk has jokes. A lot of women negatively rated. She-Hulk has jokes, most certainly, but she's so much more than the laugh. She's a superhero whammon girls and femmes need right now. And I hope She-Hulk Attorney at Law in its final five episodes realizes the power of that. So apparently a little disappointed. No top critics. Obviously the audience won't be able to review it. I'm thinking that the audience will be, you know, significantly higher. But she, but but Rotten Tomatoes is in damage control mode. It, it's like it dropped down to eighty three, and then they quick deleted everything. Now it's eighty seven again. Now it's down to eighty four. What what is it gonna? It's gonna drop below. If it drops below eighty, whoa, that's actually this is potentially very bad news. Like that's that rate those ratings are lo way lower than expected 84 17 ra 17 ratings of rotten Now it doesn't let me actually go through every you know critic review but it's they're up to something they're definitely up to something it's going to be interesting to see where this lands cuz you know Disney does not want this dropping below 80 they just couldn't take it they couldn't take it below 80 but we'll wait and see I'll be watching Rotten Tomatoes. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.